welcome to Where I Long to Be, a magical trip report podcast. My name is Virginia, and I am your host. On today's episode, I am welcoming back Kelly, aka Mouse underscore Rules on Instagram. If you didn't get a chance to listen to the pre-trip episode, Kelly is a Disney travel agent, and she recently got back from a trip to Walt Disney World with her wife, Colby, daughter, Esme, who, when we last spoke, was about to be 10, and family friends, the Quins, which includes mom, Julie, dad, Pat, and son, Connor, who is 11. The whole group was staying at Saratoga Springs in a preferred two-bedroom villa. While this trip was booked on points rented from the DVC rental store, the Quins actually just became DVC members, so this was a trip home, so to speak. The families were looking forward to some time at Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and an evening of fun at Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. That should be enough to get you started. And now, here's Kelly. Kelly, you're back. You're alive. Yes, we are back. We are back. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I hope you're feeling better. I know that that you picked up a little something on your trip. Uh, actually, before the trip. So we'll talk about that a little bit, about how I was oh. sick the entire trip. Oh, no. Ugh, that is the worst. It, you know, it wasn't fun, but I've been to Disney enough times that I was probably due for having yeah. <laughs> one trip where I wasn't feeling my best. I mean, it's it's a game of roulette, really. Eventually, you're going to be sick at Disney. Yep, and and this was my turn. Oh, all right. Well, let's let's hope there's some fun to be had in this trip report. I'm sure there is. There is. There is. Good. Good. Okay. So this was a trip with your family friends, the Quins. So six of you total, staying in a Saratoga Spring two bedroom. So my first question is, how did you like Saratoga Springs as a resort? Yeah, we, so I think I said this on the last show that my family is is typically kind of a moderate or value depending on on the trip. Um, mm-hmm. We have stayed at the Animal Kingdom before. Um, Saratoga Springs, we liked it. Um, I, I think for this trip in particular, it was a nice location because we were near Disney Springs and we were able to pop over there mm-hmm. a few times. Uh, the grounds are beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. I love um, the theming, I would say, is definitely not your kind of over the top Disney theming, but mm-hmm. there's really nice touches everywhere that kind of bring that Disney magic out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and love the swimming pool. We got to spend an afternoon by the pool one day. Uh, that was great. And then, you know, for traveling with friends, the the two bedroom villa was amazing, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, Colby and I had one room, Pat and Julie had another room and both kids wanted to sleep in the, the middle space and, and mm-hmm. that worked for everybody. So um, yeah, it was a great place to stay. I would definitely recommend it if people are especially traveling with a group and, and mm-hmm. looking for that kind of option. Right. And with the two bedroom, you have access to that full kitchen. And right. to me, the best part, a washer and a dryer. So should you want to clean anything, you can. Yeah, the washer and dryer was actually great, especially since one day it rained a little bit. So to mm-hmm. be able to kind of dry up those clothes and yeah, uh, so that that was great. And, yeah. and we also were on the first floor and, um, you know, had kind of a little patio area and that mm-hmm. and for me, it wasn't feeling great on the trip to be able to kind of just sit out there as mm-hmm. well was nice. Yeah. You I, I think you said you had a preferred room. So were you in the section, which I think is Congress Park, that's closest to Disney Springs? Yes, we were. So okay. the walk to Disney Springs was short. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe, maybe like five minutes kind of through the resort. And then obviously once you get to Disney Springs, you kind of do that over the bridge and loop around, but but yes, a very manageable and nice walk. Right. All right. Well, let's get into all of the details. So how was your flight down? It was a really early flight. It was a really early flight. And I would say in general, fine. You know, I'll just start by saying, obviously, there are people that were really impacted by that hurricane that came through. And, you know, for us, we were lucky to have an early morning flight because Mm -hmm. um, they did a ground stop at at MCO as soon as we got in. um, Oh, wow. And and they stopped flights for about an hour going in and out. And this was Thursday, September 26th for listeners, just for context. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we we got off the ground fine. It was a really smooth flight, um, landed um, on time, even if maybe a little bit early. 
But mm-hmm. that early morning flight is always a killer. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, to, we, we live about 40 minutes from the airport. Yeah. You know, we were up at two something to kind of get up. Mm-hmm. We drove over to the Quinn's house. They don't live far from us. Then we all piled into Julie's Jeep because they've got the third row. Mm-hmm. And, and off we went. But it was it was an early morning. Mm. Wow. Um, did you have room for all of your bags in her Jeep? So we, we wondered, that was what, that we <laughs> kind of met in the driveway and said, you know, we can always take two cars if we need to, but we managed by having Esme's suitcase kind of like with her in the back seat, all okay. the backpacks. So, uh-huh. so we just, we just made it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause we have a Jeep Cherokee. So I'm sitting here thinking like, I don't think I could fit four adults stuff and two kids in the back of our car. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Speaking of cars, once you landed, you were renting a car. So how did everything go with the rental car pickup? Yeah. So it took a while. Um, you know, I don't know. So again, this is where I wasn't feeling my best. So my, I was kind of zoned out in my own world, but I know that Julie had, she got in line and then they told her to kind of go to the kiosk, but then the kiosk wouldn't work. So it took a little while to get the car, but ultimately Mm -hmm. we ended up with a Wagoneer, which was like gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, and kudos to Julie, cause she did all the driving. Nice. So we all fit nicely. I think the kids were having a blast in the back. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you could kind of hear them the whole time talking about what attractions they wanted to do and Aww. what they were going to eat. And so, so Connor and Esme got along really well. Um, they already get along well, but they, they traveled well together. That's especially fun considering if you have two only children, To have Mm -hmm. the opportunity to have a trip like that is so much fun. All right. First stop was supposed to be the character warehouse. Did you end up going there or did how you were feeling affect this plan? Oh, no, we went. I masked up and and (laughs) off we went into the character warehouse. And, you know, just like you had mentioned in the last episode, it's it's hit or miss, right? I mean, you know, but... I would say we did pretty well there. Esme found a Chippendale Rescue Rangers lounge fly that she was really excited about. Mm -hmm. And actually, Connor got the same one. So they had had matching ones. I found a t-shirt. Colby found a Christmas ornament. Esme ended up with a journal. And, you know, you walk out of there and you've got this big bag of of Disney stuff for Mm -hmm. $60. And you're like, oh, wow, like this was pretty awesome. Right. You feel like you're beating the system. You do. You, and, <laughs> and, and it's fun. And, you know, I, I appreciated your heads up. It, it was definitely crowded in there. There was a line to kind of get in. It wasn't mm-hmm. too bad. And, you know, once you're in there, you're kind of like traveling around the store and, you know, there's a decent amount of people in there. So, right. yeah. you, you know, you're trying to look at everything, but be efficient at the same time. Um, right. But, yeah. but it was a great stop. I mean, I, I enjoyed going there. Yeah. And it's it's an easy stop too, I I feel like, because it's right in the center. So as long as, if you're driving, as long as you park kind of towards the the food court area, you just pop in and pop out. You don't have to make a big to-do about it. I hear some people complain about the parking, but I personally haven't ever really had any challenges finding a spot. But I also am not somebody who gets upset about having to park far away and walk a little bit through a parking lot. So... Maybe that's yeah, we, we parked kind of on the outskirts a little bit, mostly because Julie was getting used to driving that gigantic Wagoneer. Right. <laughs> but we didn't mind walking. It was also a Thursday morning, so I'm sure it was not as crowded as it can get at some times or at times. I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Was the next stop Publix? We didn't do Publix. Um, I don't know if that was partially... Well, actually, I do know it was partially how I was feeling. And it was also partially we were trying to get to the resort before it started raining. So the forecast Mm -hmm. kind of said that it was going to be rainy and windy. And I think we kind of just decided, you know what, let's just get there. We already had gotten the text that our room was ready. Mm -hmm. And it was like 11 o'clock in the morning. So we were like, let's just go. So we, we, we skipped public. Did you end up getting groceries at any other point during the trip? We didn't. Um, I think ultimately we just decided it was a short trip um, mm-hmm. and and we were fine just okay. kind of doing quick service and restaurants. All right. So the rain began, I presume. And did you just enjoy some time in the room because of that? So actually, you know, the entire time the forecast kept saying that, you know, we were going to kind of have a 
a, a big rainstorm and it didn't the entire afternoon. Um, hmm. So the Quins have annual passes. So mm -hmm. Pat and Connor decided they were going to kind of, oh no, not Connor. This time Pat just decided he was going to go over to the Magic Kingdom by himself and do a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Connor wanted to stay with us and go to the pool. So we actually spent the afternoon at the pool. It was uh -huh. a, a little bit cloudy, a little bit windy, but still nice enough to hang out by the pool. And you went up to the main pool? We did. We went to the main pool. We did kind of quick service for lunch up there and then kind of headed over to the pool. I even went down the water slide once. I wasn't feeling great, but I was like, you know what? Wow. I got to do I got to do the water slide once. <laughs> That's usually my policy too. If I'm in a pool and there's a water slide, I do it at least one time. Sometimes after a drink, you know, sometimes <laughs> the drink inspires me to go to the water slide. Yeah, I, you know, I, I in general like a good water slide. So, um, and Esme had said to me, "Oh, you got to try this water slide because it it feels longer than the ones at the other resorts." And, I, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, it was a, it was a good little water slide, and then kind of swam around in the pool for a while, and then laid down on a lo lounge chair. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the quick service option there? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think being used to going to, to a lot of the moderates, I feel like the quick services there are a lot bigger with mm -hmm. more choices. So I, I mean, I think when I first went, I was kind of surprised at how small the quick service was, and it was kind of like attached to the gift shop. And that mm -hmm. was small as well. Um, but the food choices were good. I had like an avocado toast for lunch and a tomato soup, and it was kind of perfect for what I was looking for. And everybody mm -hmm. else was happy with their food choices. Mm -hmm. So I guess less options, but good food. Yeah, I think that especially with Saratoga Springs, considering how widespread it is and how widespread, that made it sound like Saratoga Springs is a disease, how spread out <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, and the fact that if you're in a one bedroom or larger, you have access to a kitchen. And considering the fact that it's right next to Disney Springs, I'm guessing that the quick service does not get anywhere near the kind of traffic that a quick service at even another deluxe resort would get just because of all of those things combined. Yeah, I would agree. And we, we actually talked about that, that for most people, the walk over to Disney Springs is probably just as short, at least where we were staying, right? Than kind of trying to walk back to the main pool. And obviously, yeah. there's so many great options at Disney Springs. Right. Well, let's get into to one of those options, which was the selection of S. Man Connor to go to Enzo's hideaway for dinner. You yeah. had never been there. I've never been there. So I'm interested to hear how was it in terms of the vibe and also obviously the food? Yeah. So this is, this is one of those, uh, every once in a while I'll, I'll throw out um, me feeling disappointed because I was sick. And this is one of those places because when I went to dinner, I wasn't hungry and mm -hmm. I definitely wasn't going to enjoy a cocktail because I was feeling mm -hmm. terrible. And, and that kind of um, was disappointing because, you know, the vibe of Enzo's hideaway is kind of that underground speakeasy. And right. it was a really neat atmosphere. Um, I would, you know, you kind of go around the corner. It's like, you know, the restaurant is on the top and then you kind of go across the street and down the staircase mm -hmm. and you go inside and you kind of feel like you found this kind of hidden gem and they take you back through this walkway into this main dining room. And mm -hmm. you know, it's really neat looking. And, you know, they have a really great cocktail menu, which everyone else enjoyed but me. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the food menu, I would say, is not super extensive, but the, but the food options were good. And um, I, everybody, I think, really liked what they, what they got. I just, you know, for me, I was kind of in that place of like, okay, is it time for bed yet? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have, yeah. I'm going to have a few bites here and, and, and then I'm tired. What about the Indiana Jones vibe? Did you really, could you feel that vibe there? Yeah, I mean, I didn't pick up on that as much as I picked up on kind of more of an underground speakeasy kind uh -huh. of vibe. Okay. But, but I mean, they did have, um, I think, and, and I didn't really go take a look at it, but one wall on the opposite side was all graffiti. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I wonder, or, or almost like handwritten kind of like things. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if more of that was there. Am I even thinking this is the one that's Indiana Jones themed, right? Oh, no. Ha, ha. I'm thinking of a totally different one. It's Jock Lindsay's hangar bar. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this, this. Yeah, um, okay. Then, <laughs> no, of course you didn't see Indiana Jones themed stuff. I was just thinking, like, as we were sitting here and I was thinking that I was saying to myself, like, I don't think his name was Enzo. Like, why am I thinking it's him? No, Jock Lindsay was the pilot from Indiana Jones. Right. So, so, so that's right. good because here I am thinking, wow, I must've been really sick. <laughs> I totally missed out on no. this guy. I was like, it felt like more Italian kind of uh, <laughs> underground no. bar to me, but, but what did I miss here? It, it, it's me. <laughs> I'm the problem. Hi, it's me. No, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's you. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think, but you know what, this is the thing that always um, I find interesting about Disney. You can be a Disney expert mm-hmm. and there's so, there's so much, much between mm-hmm. all the places. It's easy to get things confused and just have not done something yet. So, yeah. Well, uh, and then you can have, uh, I call it etch a sketch brain. Like I turn my head and it disappears. There are certain things like I consistently notice that I get Crystal Plaza Uh, Crystal Palace and the plaza confused. See, I even just combined them just now. Like, I always have to think about which one is which, which side is it, because I've been to one and not the other, and I can never remember which one. Literally, in this moment, I can't remember which one I've been to. Well, one day I was talking to Colby a a couple of days before the trip, and I said, I was like, blah, 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 Sarasota Springs. And she goes, Sarasota Springs? You mean Saratoga, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, Saratoga. That's where we're going, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then for about two days, I was like, did I say that on the first podcast? I don't you did know. not. You okay, did good. Not. <laughs> but I was like, nope, Sarasota, Florida, Saratoga, New York, up I where know. we live. I got it. But, yeah. but have you, know, you ever? I, have you ever been to the real Saratoga? So I've been up that way. Um, Colby's mom lives in northern Vermont, kind of on the border of New York. Um, Mm -hmm. But I haven't really kind of gone like into the heart of Saratoga Springs. Yeah. We've done more like Glens Falls and Mm -hmm. there's a Six Flags that's kind of up that way. So I know they're all in the same area. Yeah. But no, I haven't really gone into Saratoga Springs. Okay. Yeah. I've never been to Saratoga Springs, but Charles has. And when we stayed at Saratoga Springs in Disney, he was he kept commenting on how how accurate the theming was. So, oh, neat. I mean, I wouldn't really expect anything less from Disney, but <laughs> so so road trip this summer. I gotta, I gotta yeah. go. Really, I mean, it, it's sort of in the middle of us. Maybe we could meet in Saratoga Springs. Yeah, and we could we could do a comparison. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. What else did you get into in Disney Springs? Or should I say, what else did everyone else get into? Because I'm thinking maybe you went back to the resort and they continue to enjoy the Springs. I did. Yeah. So Julie and I walked back. um, And I'm trying to remember, I think Connor might have walked back with us as well at that point. And then Pat, Colby and Esme went to the world of Disney because Esme mm-hmm. cannot go into Disney Springs without going to the world of Disney. I mean, same, same. Yeah. So <laughs> she, so she um, you know, she starts her shop. Actually, she's gotten much better as she's gotten older. When she was younger, it was like, you know, we would give her her souvenir budget and she would blow it like within the first you know, 20 <laughs> minutes of being on property. And now she's gotten better. She wants to kind of look at everything and make a decision. So she Mm -hmm. wanted to do that kind of first look at World of Disney because she knew Mm -hmm. we were going back the last day. So I think she wanted to scout out what she was interested in. Good plan. Yeah. So this is when the rain came. So I had already, I, we already made it back to the room. They came back soaking wet. So. Did she walk away with any uh, things on her list that she was going to be considering for the week? You know, I don't think so, because I think she was still really excited about the lounge fly she had gotten earlier, and she Mm -hmm. also got a Pandora journal. Esme really likes to collect journals from different places, Mm -hmm. Um, so she was pretty excited about that. Mm. Does she actually use the journals? Because personally, I love buying journals, too, and then I never end up using them. Yeah, so she doesn't use them in the way you would typically think of somebody kind of writing diary entries, but you mm-hmm. know, she'll she'll kind of sketch in them or um right now she's you know, this you can judge my parenting style right now, but um I'm letting her watch Stranger Things with me, which to mm-hmm. Colby's 
to, to Colby is not happy about it because Colby doesn't like anything scary. But Esme is so obsessed with Stranger Things that she'll kind of write in her journal like the, mm-hmm. the character names. and Yeah. Well, I'm not judging you at all because Alex is 14 now. When did Stranger Things first come out? Whatever that was. It's been a f- couple years now, right? Yeah. We watched it from the very beginning. So he must have been Esme's age when he started yeah. watching so, it too. Yeah. Esme's 10. We had – I I – had her wait kind of like her friends have started watching it so I was like okay Mm -hmm. green light let's go right and 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 I like stranger things so well and also it's kind of like it you don't want her sneaking to watch it it's better to kind of at least watch it with them so that you can answer any questions they have I think it's a great series me too me too and they have their uh they're doing something on Broadway with stranger things I don't think it's like the story from the show, I think it's something within the Stranger Things universe, but it's either a play or a musical that's coming to to Broadway. Ooh, um, that's nice. Sounds like another New York trip is in order. I know. Alex and I went and saw an off Broadway show based on Stranger Things, and I think it was called Stranger Sings, and it was a musical, and it was the storyline from the show, and it was one of the funniest things I have ever seen. Like they had the Demogorgon doing a dance in the middle oh. of the st- <laughs> it was it was really funny so yeah if if you come back to see uh stranger things on broadway whenever that happens then let me know and we'll have to meet up to to see each other then so. yeah absolutely all right friday september 27th so this was going to be a resort day because you had tickets to the halloween party that night so what did you do during the day so this is one of the days where i probably spent most of the day sleeping and Mm -hmm. and hanging out at the resort um i kind of felt like i did not want to crash and burn at the the halloween party so i was going to rest up um, and then Julie, Esme, and Colby also kind of were, had a pretty low key day. Mm-hmm. Connor and Pat decided they were going to do the four parks in one day challenge again. Wait a second. Four parks, one day, and a party. Yeah, we'll talk about that um, at, towards the end <laughs> of it. But yes, um, they, they did. They got up and, and they did um, – the three parks and then ended obviously at the magic kingdom where the party was. But okay. um, we all kind of told them they were, they were nuts that they mm-hmm. were going to be tired. And, and Connor definitely was tired at okay. the end of the night. So. <laughs> um, but they were excited. I think, you know, I think their annual passes are coming to an end soon. So they were trying to, particularly Pat was trying to squeeze out every ounce of his annual pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not going to renew. Um, I think I, I think maybe that's still under debate, but they just purchased. I think I said this last time. They just right. purchased DVC. So um, yeah, so they're waiting to close on that, and then I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if then they re up once yeah. once that happens. Yeah, I know. With because of my DVC discount on the annual pass, it when I do the math on how many days I'm going to be in the park even with just a week or slightly over a week trip, it's actually cheaper, the renewal price, to renew my annual pass every year. Yeah, it it totally makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Halloween party. So this was your family's first time to the Halloween party. What were your overall thoughts? Yeah, so overall, I I really liked it. Um, You know, I will say I've now done the Christmas party and the Halloween party, and I think both of them kind of mess with my flow, right? Because I have this idea of like what I should be doing and accomplishing at the Magic Kingdom. And I think when you do the parties, you really have to kind of change your mindset, right? Like you're there more for kind of the food, the special characters and and the entertainment that comes Mm -hmm. along with it. But I can't help it. My brain still wants to be like, well, should we do this? Should we jump on this attraction? Should mm-hmm. so so I have a hard time like reconciling that difference. So I'll just I'll just kind of name that for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, we originally planned to get there as soon as we could get in at four o'clock. Um, but we ended up going a little bit closer to five, I think, again, because I think people were worried I was gonna crash and burn. And then mm-hmm. Connor and Pat came back to um, the room just to kind of freshen up after their three parks that they had already done. Mm -hmm. And so we got there closer to five. Okay. 
Um, how was Tiana's Bayou Adventure? Did you actually end up getting on it? We did, and it was amazing. Um, mm. I'm, I that was probably one of the highlights of the trip for me. Um, yeah. You know, we talked about this last time. The old Splash Mountain is, of course, nostalgic, and and I loved it. But I was really excited to see the the retheming, and and I love Tiana, so it me was too. it was really neat to go through. And and we went through kind of in the evening, so it was mm. was dark too, which yeah. was nice. Esme does not like water rides, so she sat out and Julie sat out with her because Julie was fine doing that. And they did mm-hmm. some other thing. They met some characters while the rest of us did mm-hmm. that. But I, I thought the animatronics were a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I thought the, the saw like the music was great. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you still have that, you know, it's the, basically the same plunge at the end, right. That right. we're used to. So, yeah, I've talked to a number of people who have written it so far, but one thing I've neglected to ask anyone is the isn't there like a, a Tiana themed store kind of at the exit now? Yes. Um, Did you go called, in it? Yeah, it's called like I want to say like Little Critters or Critters and something. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a really cute little store. A um, lot of stuffies. Um, you know, I okay. think Esme, Esme walked around and was like, "I like this. I like this. I like this." And, <laughs> but I but I think she knows that her stuffed animal collection is a little out of control. Mm-hmm. Um, they also have Raymond or w- the fireflies and these little lanterns that oh you can goodness. get. Oh. Um, and, and actually Esme stood there for a long time and was like, this is really cool, but I don't know what I would do with it after tonight. And I was right. like, well, think about that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, but it was a neat little store. Um, it had, you know, some, obviously some clothing options and stuff as well, but, mm-hmm. but I, I thought it was a, a nice nod. Um, okay. And then kind of makes that area feel a little more festive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am definitely interested in hitting that up when I'm there. Particularly, I think I saw a Tiana spirit jersey that I'm sort of interested in. So, oh, well, yeah. by sort of interested in, you mean you'll probably buy it. When I you mean, see it. very interested in it. But I also, like, I don't wear my spirit jerseys when I'm there I because it's always too hot. <laughs> so mm. I end up wearing them around the house or, you know, around the neighborhood on the weekends. And yeah, so it's it's always a debate. I should also say about this time, I did a, a costume change. I came and it was really hot out. So I was mm-hmm. just wearing a light t-shirt and it was not Halloween festive at all. And after we rode Tiana, I switched shirts and put on my villain jersey. So at least I had a little bit okay. of the Halloween spirit. All right. Was anyone in your group wearing anything costumey? Because we had said probably not. <laughs> No, I think people, uh, a lot like Kat had on a, a shirt that had kind of nods to kind of villains and Halloween. And, mm-hmm. But but I think we really decided not to do costumes. And it was so hot. I think maybe we made the right decision. And yeah, there like were it. people that were wearing costumes that looked so hot. Like there was this guy in kind of like a full fledged top to bottom, like zip up, like halloween costume i was like he looks very hot that just sounds miserable to me yeah but but on the flip side i will say people are so creative and Mm -hmm. i think it adds to the magic to be walking around and and, and seeing families and and groups and costume Mm -hmm. Um, we saw some really neat things what about the characters that you saw during the party and did you get a chance to see any of the unique offerings so esme went and saw jafar and who else did she see somebody over in that area um when so we did that and then i i thought what was probably the highlight for me is we got to stand outside and see the cadaver dance perform mm-hmm. yeah and then after they left the hitchhiking ghosts came out um, oh cool and and they they just all do such a great job interacting with, mm-hmm. with the crowd. So it's like, not only are you getting to see them in perform in these costumes, but they really kind of go back and forth with the audience. And yeah. Esme has this ability to kind of lift one eyebrow. So she was doing that to the hitchhiking ghost and then he was doing it back to her. Um, <laughs> and it was, and, and she was just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Aww. You also said that Esme is a huge Hocus Pocus fan. So did you get to watch the stage show? 
Yeah, so um, after we kind of did that, we went over towards uh, Main Street and we ended up finding a place on the curb that was kind of like where the circle meets Main Street, like mm -hmm. sort of diagonal from where Casey's Corner is. Sure. So, so Julie and I kind of sat there and, and, and grabbed a spot. And then we kind of camped out there the whole time, but Colby took Esme down for Hocus Pocus and got closer to the stage. Mm, so okay. I kind of listened from afar, but they went and, and watched the stage show and, and really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Oh. What else did you get into at this party? I, I think you had dance party plans, Haunted Mansion plans. Yeah, so we did Haunted Mansion. Um, and I would say, you know, for anyone going to the party, if you're trying to figure out what attractions to do, I think Haunted Mansion is just classic and, and fits mm -hmm. with the overall Halloween theme. I did it once. And then um, Pat and Connor did it a second time. And when they did it, the second time they went through the lines, there were, um, I don't know, is, it, is she like an opera ghost? is that mm -hmm. there, one yeah. of the ghosts was out there kind of interacting with the line. So yeah. I didn't see that, but Pat and Connor thought that was pretty awesome. That's the thing that I always see on social media that I think looks like so much fun are the the characters just kind of in line as you go past. Yeah. So they, they had an opportunity to do that. And, and Haunted Mansion is Connor's all time favorite attraction, no matter what. So, mm, okay. um, so he did that twice. And then we also popped over to um, the first time we went on after we popped over to that little gift store, that Haunted Mansion theme. Memento Mori. Yeah. Have you ever gone and knocked on the painting? No. So you go in. Mm -hmm. And to the left, there's a painting mm -hmm. and you can knock on it and mm -hmm. it, it knocks back at you. Really? Okay. Yeah. So we, we went in and I, I have this little video of, of the kids knocking on the wall. And then mm -hmm. when they knock back, Esme's face was like, mm. what, just, what just happened? <laughs> so That's cute. Yeah, so we did that. Um, and then just on the Haunted Mansion theme, Connor really wanted the Madame Leota seance candle dessert. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he really enjoyed that. It was like a red velvet. Um, I, I'm not sure if he enjoyed the dessert as much as he enjoyed the theme of the dessert. But in general, he said right. it was a thumbs up. Good. What time did you end up staying to for the party? Because d does it go till midnight? Is that right? Yeah, we stayed pretty much till midnight. So so once we got out to do the shows, um, the spectacular, um, the not so spooky spectacular, which is the fireworks, I think that was the highlight for me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love Magic Kingdom fireworks anyway. Um, but I just think, you know, the music, the castle projections, the fireworks, and in general, the fireworks seem to have like a wider span than mm -hmm. they normally do. So I just, it was such a beautiful visual. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that for me was definitely my like top thing mm -hmm. from the party is I loved the fireworks. And then after that was the stage show. So they kind of snuck up to do that. And then um, the the parade was amazing too. So we, mm -hmm. we had great spot for the parade because they were kind of like coming around the corner from the circle mm -hmm. and we were like right there. Did you end up doing any trick or treating or did you ignore that? So yeah, they did. I, I think that I got the original bag with candy in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I joked with the kids that because um, I was a little slower than everyone that night. I was like, make sure I don't get lost and then you can have all my candy. And, <laughs> and, and they gave me a hard time because I didn't really get any more candy. But um, the kids definitely went through a couple of the lines, but but definitely not all of them. I just don't think that was the priority for right. for us. And, you know, at their age, they definitely wanted some candy, but they didn't feel the need to go through every line, especially right. the ones that were longer. Yeah, my impression is even without going through a bunch of the lines, you get a good amount of candy. So you do. I mean, they kind of just scoop it in. And so there's right. plenty of candy to be had. Yeah. All right. Anything else for that day? Or are we good to move into Saturday? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, we, we tried a handful of, of kind of the snacks that were out there. We had the flatbread that was over mm -hmm. at um, Pecosville. Um, Casey's Corner had these fries with like a 
kind of like pork and corn and all kinds of like, so that was pretty delicious too. Mm -hmm. But, but overall, yeah, just, we really enjoyed kind of the shows, the entertainment. Um, And, you know, it's just an overall vibe, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do. Right. Yep. Uh, to me, that's what Disney's all about is the vibes. Yeah. Hands down. All right. Saturday, September 28th. This was your your big park day with multi-pass. And it was also Julie's birthday. So yes. shout out to Julie. Happy birthday, yeah. Julie. Happy birthday, Julie. And, <laughs> um, and, and thanks for being a good sport with our matching t-shirts. Oh, oh yes, you were going to wear <laughs> birthday girl shirts, right? Yes. Yeah, so we had we all had birthday squad, and then hers said my birthday. Uh-huh. Um, so oh, that was a cute. lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So starting your day in Animal Kingdom with three Lightning Lane multi pass options, you had chosen Safari, Everest, and Dinosaur, presumably for the last time, for real this time. For real this time, at least I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How was your Animal Kingdom time? Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm sure this does not surprise you, but after um, getting back to the to the hotel around one in the morning, we mm-hmm. did not make it for opening at Animal Kingdom. We were close. Um, we were there about an hour after it opened. Um, but, oh, I forgot but- to ask you for the party. Did you drive there or did you rely on Disney transportation? We ended up relying on just Disney transportation. Um, okay. All right. But this day on the Saturday, we drove. Okay. Because I was thinking when you said you got back at 1 a.m., I was wondering, is that in your own vehicle or that's what time you made it back using the, the Disney transportation? So that's, yeah, not, and that's say- not actually so bad using Disney transportation for, for No, not, a, not at all in um, – and Connor and Julie actually, so going back to their four parks in one day, mm-hmm. um, at the per, was it at the fireworks? Connor was like, yeah, I'm done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so they actually left, um, after the fireworks. So okay. Connor was just exhausted. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then the rest of us stayed until about midnight and yeah, it wasn't that hard to get, I think we got the second bus out to Sarasota mm-hmm. Springs as we were arriving the bus was filling up, mm-hmm. it left, and then the next one came within like five minutes. So it wasn't okay. bad at all. All right. So driving your own car to Animal Kingdom the next day, which is always nice. Yeah. So we got to park, then we jumped on the tram, and, and mm-hmm. that was as easy as can be. So mm-hmm. we headed over to Animal Kingdom, um, kind of like I'm used to rope dropping, you know, when mm-hmm. everybody is kind of queued up and, you know, you get there after rope drop and you pretty much walk right in right um, which which is what we did and um our first order of business really ended up being dinosaur Mm -hmm. so we we kind of went right through we didn't even stop for the tree of life picture which (laughs) which i was i was a little (laughs) kind of you know i always feel like you need the tree of life picture but we went right through headed over to dinosaur and yeah presumably took our last ride on on dinosaur Hmm. um so that's not our dino, right? So not anymore. It's not. not oh. It's not our dino anymore. <laughs> um, and and you know I love dinosaur. Again, you know I always am interested in the rethemings that are coming, and right. you know I'm 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 always excited for change. But I, I, dinosaur is is a great one, and um, mm-hmm. you know so we have that last picture of us all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else did you get into at Animal Kingdom? Yeah, so after that, Julie's favorite character is Daisy. And on the birthday squad shirts, we all had a character and Julie's was Daisy. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Daisy was there doing meet and greet. So we got in line with Daisy. um, So Mm -hmm. Julie could get her birthday picture with Daisy. And and then we got a group picture with Daisy. And then Chippendale were around as well. So I let them get in line for Chippendale and I did a coffee run. So I went to Joffrey's for the adults and, mm-hmm. and got coffee. And then after Chippendale, they met me and, and I had the caffeine. Question, buying coffee for four adults, do they offer carrying trays if you need one? So, you know, I was wondering that as well as I was standing there in line. And yes, they do. They have, <laughs> okay, they have carrying trays. But I but I did kind of make them come to me. It was like, I'm not walking to you all with this coffee. So so they came around, good for met you. me. 
I dispersed the coffee and then mm-hmm. we made it over to Kilimanjaro Safari. Mm-hmm. How was the f- safari this day? Yeah, it was good. Um, uh, the Quins definitely said it was the safari where they've seen the most animals so far. Mm. So they, they were okay. pretty excited about it. I would say for us, we usually go early in the morning. So I would say, I don't know, it seemed kind of typical for us. Okay. Um, but but we saw the lions, which was which mm-hmm. is always great. And um, we saw elephants and giraffes. And mm-hmm. um, I would say nothing came up really close to us. But, um, you know, we, we saw a lot of different animals. And I thought that our, our tour guide was um, probably like better than you know, the tour guides are always great, but she was Mm -hmm. really good. Like she was just, um, she had a lot of good information and she was funny. And, and so we had a great tour guide. Did you head over to Everest after this? So after this, the timing was that we needed to go over to Pandora for flight of passage. Mm -hmm. So Pat, Colby, Esme and Connor did flight of passage. Mm-hmm. And then Julie and I had a goal of going over to Nomad Lounge to see if we could get up on the walk up list. And yes, it did not work out. Like oh, by the no. time we, it, it was all right. Um, you know, again, going back to, I wasn't really participating in cocktails anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so that didn't really work for us. So what Julie and I did instead is we decided to have fun with the photo pass and we had our own series of, of photo shoots. So, oh, that's cute. Um, so we went to probably five or six photo passes kind of around that Pandora area. And we just, we flooded the, the photo, mm-hmm. the photo app. So we, we had fun doing that. Cute. Okay. Um, what time did you end up leaving Animal Kingdom to do your hopping? So let's see, this is probably about noon. And then we ate at Satuli. Am I pronouncing that? Is it yeah, Satuli Canteen. Can- Satuli Canteen. So that was the first time I'd ever eaten there. Um, oh, really? So we decided okay. to eat there instead. Um, and I loved it there. Um, I had one of the bowls. So I had like chicken noodles and um, I don't know. So they have several different sauces you can pick from. I thought it was delicious. Connor had the cheeseburger pods and Esme had some kind of like hot dog. Um, Esme's a picky eater. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so we ate there. And then after that, the goal was to go on to Everest, but it started raining. And mm-hmm. so we kind of just all looked at each other and said, do we want to try for Everest or do we just want to use this time to kind of do our transport mm-hmm. over to Epcot? And we decided to just go over to Epcot. Okay. So because you had your own car, you were you were driving over to Epcot. Um, so that made things a little bit easier. You had kind of talked about maybe having a midday break. You didn't make any stops in between? So we didn't, but we actually kind of shook up the transportation a little bit. So we were thinking about our day at Epcot. And I think one of the things that we realized is we were going to end the day at Epcot in the World Showcase. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do instead is we drove to Hollywood Studios, we parked there, Mm -hmm. and then we jumped on the Skyliner. And then we kind of came in through the International Gateway. Uh So we could so we could leave that way as well. Okay. Um, and, and so that actually worked out nicely because, you know, there was a little bit, it was still sprinkling a little bit when we parked at Hollywood and kind of had to get over to the Skyliner. But then while we were on the Skyliner, skies kind of cleared up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And by the time we got to Epcot, it stopped raining, which was awesome. What about at the end of the night? So did you need to presumably take the Skyliner back to Hollywood Studios to be able to get your car. Yeah, so that's what we did. And we ended up leaving um, maybe like 45 minutes before the park closed. So then we mm-hmm. avoided the crazy Skyliner. Okay. So right. we pretty much walked right on the Skyliner at the end of the night and, mm-hmm. you know, got our car in Hollywood and went back. So okay. um, I'm just one of those people that when I'm at Epcot, there's nothing worse than the walk from like the back of the world showcase all the way to the front of the park when you're right. tired. Yeah. So, so that's what we were kind of trying to avoid. And the Skyliner is just fun. So it yes. was a, a way to ride the Skyliner too. It's an attraction unto itself. I agree. All right. Let's talk about your Epcot time. It is currently food and wine festival. So mm-hmm. did you feel like you got to take advantage of the offerings of that festival or 
were you still not feeling great at this point? You know, I was still not feeling great. So I would say I didn't partake as much as um, the other folks did. Um, and, and honestly, the whole time I was sick, this was the day that I felt the most disappointed, right? Because Epcot's one of my favorite parks. And mm -hmm. I was really excited for food and wine. And you know, when you're just not feeling good, you're not hungry. Right. Um, and, and, you know, so I just, it, for me, it was kind of ended up being, you know, some moments of fun, but mostly I was feeling pretty bummed that day. Mm. Um, so, so, but I'll talk more from the experience of the other people in our group, because I think we had a lot of fun. Sure. So, so we, so first of all, we decided to go into the, one of the souvenir stores and do the um, Remy scavenger hunt. Um, mm -hmm. So you can do this little scavenger hunt where you can find Remy at all the different kind of food areas. And then at the end, you get a little, a little bowl. Um, and, you know, obviously you pay, you, well, not obviously, but you pay for your um, scavenger hunt map. And then at the end, really mm -hmm. you're paying for the bowl. Right. That, that you get at the end anyway. So. And if you don't finish the scavenger hunt, you can still get your bowl. <laughs> yeah. And as a matter of fact, the two women in front of me collect them. So they basically purchased their maps, didn't want to open their maps, and just got the bowl all in one. So so you, you can really do it any way you want. So we, we came out of the International Gateway, and we decided that what we were going to do is kind of hit um, England and Canada and mm -hmm. kind of go that way and, and kind of look for Remy and, and kind of see if there was anything we wanted to kind of partake in. Mm -hmm. um, and mostly we kind of made our way to the front of the park because we did have a couple of attractions we were going to do yes. um, before we jumped full fledged into the, the food and wine fest. Okay. Was one of those attractions Cosmic Rewind? Uh, it was. And I will tell you that I almost thought about like, wow, I feel so terrible. Do I really want to go on this spinny um, ride and the answer was yes I do because I love Cosmic <laughs> Rewind. I so thought much. that might be the answer. <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely the answer, and and I'm glad that I went on it because that was definitely one of the highlights. So in terms of attractions, we did Cosmic Rewind. Um, what did song Journey. did you get? Oh, we got um, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Yay, which so we much. had not gotten yet. So we we were actually talking about this in my family. We've now done it three times and and had three different songs, which is oh, that's very lucky. Pretty neat. So the very first one we had was um, uh, Gloria Stefan, a little uh -huh. tanga, and then we had um, Iran. Oh no, we've done it four times now. Mm -hmm. We had Iran, and then we had Blondie. Uh huh. And, one way and or that, another. One way or another, mm -hmm. and now we've had everybody wants to rule the world. So Perfect. we're missing what September and, and disco, disco inferno. inferno. Yep. So yep. So yeah. So four times, four different songs. So we, we're feeling pretty lucky about that. Yeah, that's really lucky because I hear all the time about people getting the same song and not being able to finish out their set. So you're well on your way. Yeah. So we're working on it. So. Um, so we, we did Cosmic Rewind. I'm a little out of order on the attractions here, but I think that's, that's okay. okay. So we did Cosmic Rewind. We did Soren. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we got the perfect seats in Soren where you're in the middle and you're kind of second row in. So, nice. you're, you know, you've got the, the good mm -hmm. screen view. So um, so we did Soren. We did Journey to Imagination um, because the Quins had never done it. In all of their, their Disney goings, they had oh. never done Exactly. It's a classic. Um, so uh, we took them on that. Uh, what did they think about it? Because I know people have mixed feelings about Figment. Yeah, I mean, I think that they're Figment fans. I mean, I think most of I, I mean, you know, I love Figment, but that attraction needs needs some love, I think. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's probably time for some kind of redo there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they probably felt the same way. Like, it was kind of good to go through it once, but it's not mm -hmm. going to be their all-star attraction. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, and uh, if you ever go back with the Quins, once their DVC is finished, perhaps they will take you up into the DVC lounge in the Imagination Pavilion. I know. Wouldn't that be pretty neat? So, um, so we'll have to do that. It needs bathrooms. But other than that, it's nice to have a place to sit down and relax yeah, for a little bit. I think they do the no bathroom thing on purpose, though, so that people won't sit there forever. That's probably true. So, <laughs> I, I mean, everything with Disney is strategic, right? Right. So, so we did that. And then we headed over to one of the food and wine 
pavilions. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were also kind of looking for for Remy. Um, But there's a a Mickey and Friends character meet and greet over in that corner. It's a newer one, right? It's a newer meet and greet. In the center with where you meet all three? Yes. So yes, we, I love so there that. Was, there was absolutely no line. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say that what we learned about the Quins is they're not as into the photos as we are. We're kind of like, mm-hmm. there's a character. Let's get a picture with the character. And they're kind right. of like, yeah. Um, but we did go through that one. And um, I think Julie had a fun interaction with Minnie, um, or I guess we all did because we, you know, we all got to pick our characters on our shirts, but none mm-hmm. of us had Minnie. So Minnie lined us all up and she was, she was looking at all our shirts and she's uh-huh. kind of like, where am I? Like, I'm not, I'm not on these shirts. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and we were like, oops, sorry, Minnie, not this time. Well, um, I, I never asked you which characters were on each of your shirts. Oh, okay. So Pat had Maleficent. Mm-hmm. I did the evil queen because I was kind of feeling the Halloween vibes. Nice. Colby had Thumper uh-huh. and not on purpose. Esme and Connor had Chip and Dale. Oh, the, wait, they each had Chip and Dale or one of them had Chip and one had Dale? I think Esme had Chip and Connor had Dale or maybe mm-hmm. I have that mixed up, but okay. that, that's cute. how they picked. Yeah, so it was cute, except I think most of the time people assumed they were siblings, I think, because they had their like matching Chip and Dale, but right. all, yeah. all good. All good. <laughs> all right. What else did you do after that? I know you had... Mission Space Orange on Esme's list. Did she end up doing it? I absolutely did not do it, but Pat is a trooper and he took Connor and Esme on Mission Space Orange. Mm-hmm. And they had a blast and Esme was really excited about it. Um, mm-hmm. And Julie Colby and I, we went over to, is it Wings and Brew, where they kind of have the puppet themed pavilion mm-hmm. with the food so we went over there and i tried the dreaded pickle milkshake which i'm going to tell you i am not a fan mm, that was very brave of you to try that while you weren't feeling well yeah, well you know no time like the present right so <laughs> i i had these two pictures of like the nice pretty pickle milkshake and then uh-huh. like how much i actually had of it which uh-huh. is basically the whipped cream and two sips um, mm. and then we tried the pickle spears and we tried the garlic Parmesan wings, you know, so we, we kind of sat and had a snack while, um, mm. while they did that. And then when they got off Mission Space, Pat picked up one of the French fry flights from mm-hmm. one of the stands. And then um, we kind of snacked on that as well. Did you do anything else in the front of the park or was it time to kind of make your way around the world? Yeah, at that point, it was definitely time. Oh, you know, I just remembered somewhere along the line, um, Julie, Colby, and I did Spaceship Earth. Mm, um, okay. and, and I don't really remember the timing or who was where, but, um, mm. you know, that's always a classic and I enjoy that one. It so. is. I so, And I recently found out that's Charles's favorite attraction. <laughs> I had oh, no really? idea. Yes, I was interviewed. I did a little like five minute interview with him at the end of my uh, reporting on our impromptu trip. And asked him what his favorite attraction was. And I was shocked to learn that it was Spaceship Earth. It is a good one. I mean, I, I, mean, enjoy, it's I, good. I enjoy the story. And, um, you know, it's a good way to kind of relax a little bit and air conditioning as well. But but mm-hmm. in general, you know, that that that's one of those attractions that has a lot of memories for me. I remember being a kid. On that, mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. So, yep. Thank the Phoenicians. Thank the Phoenicians. And uh, yeah, so the, so at this point, then yes, the front of the park is done. And we kind of started our way over in the Mexico area. Mm-hmm. Or actually, I guess they had an Australia kind of thrown in there for fruit and wine. So we kind of started mm-hmm. there and made our way around. Okay. What were some of the highlights for the food and wine booths? Yeah. So um, again, I didn't partake in many of these, but I'll tell you our group in general. So um, in Australia, they did, there was like a grilled shrimp that Mm -hmm. they got and that that they all really liked. Mm -hmm. Um, And then moving over to Mexico, they did some spicy margaritas and I just sat there looking sad. Wistfully Um, staring at the margarita. (laughs) I was just like, where's my margarita? Um, And, and they also did the tostada that had the shrimp on Mm -hmm. it as well. And they really liked that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then I think we kind of walked through some countries looking for Remy and they stopped at India again and got some Samoas. No, not Samoas, Samosas. I do this all the time. I mix it up with the Girl Scout cookies. Girl Scout cookies, yeah. I did not get Girl Scout cookies. (laughs) And if Julie's listening to this podcast, she's going to laugh at me because I did the same thing at the park. And Julie was like, Girl Scout cookies? And I was like, no, no, no. But now it's in my head, right? Like, you know, Uh when you get something in your head and now you're going to. Yes. So so samosas and some of the tiki masala. um, Mm -hmm. And they had some of that and enjoyed that as well. And I'm trying to think. um, This is where I will say that I started fading fast. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do feel like they grabbed some more food and drink options along the way. But Mm -hmm. I just didn't. Um, I know Pat stopped in one of the booths and got some kind of. Uh, oh, maybe Spain paella with some kind of like squid mm-hmm. ink, um, and he really liked that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, How late so, did you end up staying at Epcot? I would say probably until like mm, the the show was starting as we left, mm-hmm. so okay. probably like nine ish. Maybe we ended up leaving. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I definitely feel like that was my fault. Like, I I feel like everybody else kind of packed it up because at a certain point, they all looked at me and were like, wow, (laughs) you look (laughs) terrible. Um, I mean, to be fair, though, the park didn't stay open much past that anyway. So no, it didn't. I mean, we we I definitely pushed my way through and and and, you know, I, I think people keep saying to me, like, do you wish you hadn't gone? And and I think my, my answer is no. Like, I'm glad I went because, you mm-hmm. know, in between feeling ter- – mostly it was kind of like I took some Tylenol and felt better and then I would crash again. Right. Um, so – but I'm glad I went. I think there were a lot of fun moments in between mm-hmm. not feeling well and, you know, I would have just felt not well at home too. So Right. I mean – I'd rather feel not well at Disney than not well at home. I mean, in some cases, I suppose. There are some cases where I'd rather just be in my bed. But <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think probably the only difference is, is do I think I probably would have gotten over it if I stayed and just rested somewhere for days? Probably. Mm-hmm. But instead, I kind of pushed myself. And by the time I was flying home, I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, and then didn't go to work for like mm-hmm. another two days, three days, because I felt terrible. All right. So that gets us to uh, Sunday, September 29th, where you had some time before your flight. So the plan had been to go over to Disney Springs and have breakfast at Summer House on the Lake. Were you feeling up to that? So I was. And um, I will say that was one of the those moments that I was actually feeling pretty good. That mm-hmm. place is amazing. Have you been there yet? Not yet. No. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to put this on my top places that I've kind of really? e- eaten at Disney. Like I really loved it there. Mm, okay. um, so the food was amazing. The atmosphere is kind of like really sunny and light and fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, our servers were, were wonderful. Um, I ultimately had like a breakfast tostada that was delicious. Like it was mm-hmm. so good. You know, the only thing for me is again, like because I wasn't feeling well, I was like, nope, I will not partake in any adult beverages. Um, but mm-hmm. they have like flights of mimosas and stuff and mm-hmm. everyone else at the table had a a nice, lovely breakfast, Mm -hmm. breakfast drink. And I, you know, had my freshly squeezed orange juice, which was probably better for me. Uh Um, (laughs) But, but yeah, I loved it there. I Mm -hmm. really loved it there. Mm -hmm. What about the kids options? Did they have things that they were into? Yeah. So Connor, um, you know, Connor's a little bit older, so he kind of orders for the most part off the adult menu. And Esme kind of still sits in that in between of like sometimes the adult menu, sometimes the kids menu. But it was perfect for Esme because she's picky and she was able to do kind of like a kids bacon, scrambled eggs, fruit, which was absolutely perfect for her. And and she really liked that. Um, Colby and I both did the tostadas. Um, I'm trying to remember what Pat and Julie ate. Um, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I do know they both really liked their meals. So we had also talked about how Colby is such a diehard Gideon's fan, but there are cookies at Summer House on the Lake that are the talk of the town. So did you end up getting any of those cookies? 
we did um, because we wanted to do a little bit of a comparison. So mm -hmm. I think for our family, Gideon's is still the winner. Okay. Um, but I'll say they're also just two different types of cookies, right? right? You know, have you, you've had cookies at Gideon's before? Yes. Multiple times. Yes. They're you know, huge. So Gideon's, <laughs> Gideon's are kind of thicker and cakier and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and these I would consider to be more traditional type cookies, um, with lots of great options. So mm -hmm. I did have a, um, a chocolate chip kind of like sea salt one mm -hmm. and it, it was delicious. It was a, a great cookie. And I had a couple of bites that day. Um, but then actually ended up eating it like once I was back here, like I had kind of yeah. wrapped it up and, and ate it once I was back in Massachusetts and mm -hmm. it was a lovely snack one day. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I think we're Gideon's family, but both cookies are excellent. Did you make it over to Gideon's on this day? We actually did Gideon's. I forgot to say this on the first, okay. no, the second day. Um, oh, I guess I completely forgot this on the Friday while we were resting up for the Halloween party, we did take a walk over to Disney Springs. Okay. And we did Gideon's um, and I was on the hunt for a smoothie because I was in the, a mood to kind of have a smoothie that day. And mm -hmm. I went to, I'm going to, I'm going to botch the name of it, but it's kind of like a, a, a gelato place that's close to Gideon's and they mm -hmm. do kind of like, no, sorbet. Um, they do like this kind of like fresh fruit sorbet smoothies and, and mm -hmm. I had one of those and it was pretty good. Um, but no, yeah. we did on the ship. Long story short, yes, we were able to have both Gideon's and um, Summer House cookies on this trip. Okay. What else did you end up doing at Disney Springs before you had to take off for the airport? Yeah, mostly shopping. So we went back to World of Disney um, mm -hmm. where Esme, I don't think, ended up buying, I'm trying to think. She did buy um, like a, like what, you know, those bouquet of Mickey lollipops because mm -hmm. she wanted to bring them back to her friends. Mm -hmm. So she bought that. Um, she, we ended up with quite a few souvenir pins on this trip. I can't remember like some we bought in the parks, but I do think she bought one at World of Disney as well. Mm -hmm. um, some Halloween themed and just kind of some kind of your regular run of the mill pins. Mm -hmm. Um a Monsters, Inc. pad folio, like back to her journals. She likes things to write on. Um, oh, okay. So one of those that comes with like the markers and stuff. Yes. So she Got bought it. that. So she's always about things to write on. So if you go into Esme's room by her bed, mm -hmm. she just has this stack of like mm -hmm. different books and journals she's collected from, no. from different places. All right. Uh, I think that really brings us to your flight then. So you had a little bit of a stop in Chicago, which I'm guess no, no, no. Did you get to change? So, so here's what happened. It happened, and again with the with the hurricane that was supposed to come through Florida but didn't, and again just devastated other parts of the country, which is which right is so sad. I have I have family that lives in South Carolina, and they didn't have power forever, and. Mm -hmm. So when the, they weren't sure the path of the storm, we got a text from Southwest that basically said, if you want to change your flight, you can. So first of all, we were in debates about whether we were going to change the trip or try to do anything and then mm -hmm. eventually decided to roll the dice and let it ride, um, which, which turned out fine for us. But during that window, I, I had said to Colby, I wonder if because they've opened this window, I can go change us to the direct flight. And, and they let me. So I signed in, uh -huh. I changed it to the direct flight, no charge. Um, wow. And so we all ended up on the same flight home. Oh, that's fantastic. Because I know you had said it was going to cost like $600 or something more originally to get on that direct flight. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting here thinking like, how terrible would that be to have to go through Chicago and have the layover when you're not feeling 100%? Yeah, no, we were able to do the direct flight home. And, and that just kind of, I mean, that was just pure kind of luck. Because mm -hmm. yeah. my guess is Southwest, when they're opening the window, they probably aren't then monitoring what you pick or don't pick. They're probably just saying, hey, because, because these flights are in this, this window, they're allowed right. to be changed. Yeah. Um, and on some level, you know, because we were still unsure about like what weather was going to be like the fact that it was a direct flight and we weren't going to have to go through Chicago was probably a good thing anyway. Right. So. Yeah. 
All yeah. right. Well, what a fun trip. Yeah. And you know, it, it was a great trip. We did a lot of firsts, which was, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the, the saddest part is always now your Disney countdown starts over. Right. So, right. Well, um, when is your next planned trip? Do you have anything on the books, whether it's a cruise or a, a trip? Yeah. So it's actually a cruise. So, um, and it's with the Quins again. So we are going on the Disney treasure at the end of May, which we oh, are amazing. really excited about. So I've been joking around that for about a month before that, I'll just wear a mask and make sure that I'm, I'm at full health <laughs> when we go on the cruise. But, um, but we're really excited. We're going to do a couple nights at old Key West mm-hmm. um, before we get on the cruise. Um, I don't know if we'll do a park day or we'll just do a water park day. We haven't decided that yet. And where does the cruise go? We are going out of Port Canaveral and it goes to this is terrible, right? I should know. St. Thomas, Tortola. Mm-hmm. Or do I have that right? Tortola. That sounds right to me. Yeah, sounds right to me too. Um, <laughs> there's another I think island. your brain probably wants to say Tortuga because of Tortuga Tavern. It, yes, I think that's probably true. <laughs> um, there's another island and then there's also um, Castaway Cay. Yes, so. there's the new the new one. Yeah, I can't and I don't the think, name of it. I think it's Lighthouse Point. It's the oh, new okay. One. Got it. Um, yeah, so we're pretty excited about that. I mean, the treasure. I mean, right? It's not even fully bu- built yet, and mm-hmm. and we're we're booked to be on it in mm-hmm. May. And and the theming on the ship is just incredible. So we're really excited. And this answered my other follow up question. I was going to ask, which was, do you think you and the Quins will ever travel together again? So it sounds like this was a uh, family travel match made in heaven. Yeah, it, you know, so I mean, I kept joking the whole time that they're never going to want to travel with me again. So I, I kept saying, <laughs> I, I kept saying, good thing we have another trip booked so I can uh-huh. I can redeem myself. But yeah, I think we traveled well together. We're all Disney fans. Um, mm-hmm. And I think like you said earlier, you know, when you have only children, it's nice to kind of have you know, that kind of mix of two mm-hmm. kids and, and also four adults that you don't have to do right. everything all the time. And we've kind of talked about this with the crews as well, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, if Pat and Julie want to go and do- enjoy the kind of adult areas on the ship, you know, we mm-hmm. can hang with the kids for a while. And yeah, um, so so we're looking forward to it. And you've done Disney cruises before, correct? Just, uh, we've done a lot of cruises, only one other Disney cruise. We did the dream okay. out of New York when they were still going on in New York. Mm, I know. I wish they were still going out of New York. My my Disney dream is to roll up to the port with my suitcase and not have to get on a flight to go on a Disney cruise. But I think that ship has sailed, so to speak. <laughs> that that ship has sailed, at least temporarily. I, I, yes. I, I hope maybe they'll make a... a because, you know, we're being in Massachusetts, we mm-hmm. just drove to New York, parked the car and, and yeah. got on the ship. It was it was great. Yeah. So. Yeah. They used to do Disney cruises up to Canada from here, too. And I would love to go to Canada again sometime soon. But I think I would rather drive to Canada than than be on a, a Disney cruise. I kind of want to go someplace warm for a Disney cruise. But. Yeah, I mean, that 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 makes sense. Um, you know, and, and the Disney cruises are awesome. When I first went on a Disney cruise, you know, the question was always like, why are Disney cruises so much more expensive? Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, part of it is they just have fewer ships. And, and you know, there's a supply and demand effect to it. But Right. But it's an amazing cruise. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, after we got off our first Disney cruise, I was like, okay, I get it. I get yeah. why they cost more money. Right. Um, you know, especially if you're a Disney fan. I mean, if you're not right. a Disney fan, then maybe it's 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 not worth the extra money. But but the theming and the mm-hmm. characters and the fireworks and I mean, there's just so many amazing parts to a Disney cruise. And Disney travel agents can also book Disney cruises, correct? Correct. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. One day I'm going to get on one. I just have to convince Charles. But somebody recently recommended that I just go ahead and book one and then <laughs> tell him about it later. And I, I think that's I probably think the that's way to go. Idea. <laughs> I, I think that's the great idea. And and then a month beforehand, you'd be like, well, if you don't want to go, I'll just take a friend with me. And right. Exactly. I, I'm, volu- I'm volunteering. Okay. I see <laughs> your hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, for the, for the audience, I have raised my hand as a volunteer for Virginia's <laughs> uh, uh, cruise companion. 
<laughs> well, Kelly, it has been a pleasure chatting with you. I hope that you will come back on the show at some point, And I hope that you have an amazing time on that cruise. And please say hello to Colby. Say hello to Esme for me. And, and let the Quins know if they ever want to be a guest on the podcast. They should hit me up. I, well, I will let them know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Pat jumped on that. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he's a diehard like me. He he is a diehard. And uh, I think he's done some podcasts in the past as well, too. So he would, he'd be your expert. So. Oh, fantastic. All, All right. right. Well, have a great rest of your, your day and a wonderful week ahead. All right. Take care, Virginia. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kelly, for joining me on the show. Listeners, if you are looking for an amazing travel agent and want to reach out to Kelly, her information is in the show notes and available on whereilongtobepodcast.com. She would love to help you plan your next magical trip whenever you're ready. That's all for today. Thank you all so much for listening and keep daydreaming about where you long to be.